All right, so the question here is, given that inequality negative 2.3 times q is greater than negative 13, is q equal to 4.6 solution? So how do we check? Let's see if something's a solution. Plug in 4.6 Anytime you have an equation or an inequality or anything, you want to check to see if something's a solution, just plug it into that uh, statement, whatever it is. So negative 3.3 times 4.6. Is it greater than negative 13? Let's see. So we have uh, negative 3.3 times 4.6, negative 15.18. Negative 15.18 is greater than negative 13. Is that true? No. no. Well, it's less than, it's more to the left, right on the number line, negative 15.8 would be more to the left than negative 13. Number 19, take a gander there. So graph the inequality Z is less than 11 and one quarter. So do a number line down, let's say uh, we have zero there, five, 10, let's call it 11, and 12 is right there. So you need to find 11 and a quarter. Here's uh, 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter is right about there. Uh, so you just kind of put a, a smaller tick mark right there. It needs to be less than 11 and a quarter, so zero is less than 11 and a quarter, five is less, so two and a half, four, all these guys are less than 11 and a quarter, right? less than, right? So we're, we're shading all this in, or giving it an arrow to the left for infinity. We're coloring it in, we're shading it in, we're drawing all these points. We get up to 11, that's fine. 11 is less than 11 and a quarter. But when we get to 11 and a quarter, do we want to let Z be 11 and a quarter? No. No, because if, if Z was 11 and a quarter, this would say 11 and a quarter is less than 11 and a quarter, which is not true. So when I get to 11 and a quarter, how do I show that I can get really close but not actually be 11 and a quarter, Monica? Uh, open circle. Open circle, exactly. Just a nice little symbol somebody in history made up to let us know we can get close to that number but not actually be at that number. 14 and 19, is that cool? Graphing, okay. Writing it as an inequality. Taking it from a sentence to an inequality. Inequality to a sentence. Okay, well, I thought that would be quick, so let's put everything away now, take out a piece of paper, get back into our groove here after the break, and uh, take a review. All right, three times a number H plus six is less than 12. So uh, let's start with the first <coughs> part of the sentence here. Three times the number H. How do we show three times the number H, Charlie? Three H. H. All right, what we have next, Sean? Plus six. Plus six. Next, someone different. Alex? Um, um, less than so the arrow would be pointing to 12. And the open part would be pointing to. We're going to go like this? Yeah. Well. We want this stuff to be less. Oh. So actually, if we want three times the number h plus six to be less than 12, we want this to be less than. We want the smaller part of the symbol. That's how I think of it. The smaller part, the lesser part, is on the lesser side. The bigger part, with the bigger gap, is on the greater side. Uh, can I show you that little story about an equals being turned into a Less than sign? No? If, uh, if some math mathematician wanted to say uh, some relationship between 3 and 6, they couldn't say equal to, right? So uh, maybe they thought, well, it, it's like not equal to. One of these things is smaller, so I'll take this. E I'm just making up this story. This is the story I always tell myself. They take the equal symbol, and they kind of taper two parts of it towards each other. And I could grab that thing and remove it. Right, so it's like an equal.
equal symbol that's been kind of crushed down on one side, right? That side is smaller, the other side is larger, and that's how I, that's the story my brain always tells me whenever I wonder which way does that go. Uh, so 3h plus 6, that needs to be less than, well, 12. There we go. Good? Questions? Yeah, okay. So we're going to graph the following. That means we need a number line. Number line. Uh, we need to show where 4 is. So let's throw a 0 there. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 4. Okay. Can it be 4? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Can it be 4? So we show that with a what? Closed circle. Closed circle. Close circle. And x needs to be any value that's uh, what? Greater than 3. So could it be 5? Yes. yes. Could it be 2? No. So it could be 5, it could be 6, it could be any number that's bigger than 3. Or sorry, 4. Any number that's bigger than 4. And going on into positive infinity. Okay. Good. Any questions? Feel like we got that down? See a graph. You know what it's talking about? Yep. Great. All right, let's talk about solving inequalities today. And solving inequalities with addition and subtraction, multiplication, and division. Just like when we learn to solve equations, we learn them in a similar order. Uh, so let me ask you this. Let's make sure we have our notes out, right? Should take a note, so I'll give you a few seconds to get that down while I ask you the question. Is this true? Okay, so I'm using... Uh, I'm not using numbers, but I am, I'm using kind of like objects, right? So there's this many on this side, then there's uh, some more on the other side, and I'm saying that this is less than that. That's true. We can just see it, right? I can see this shape here, this shape over there. I can see how those parts are the same, and that one extra makes this side greater, okay? If I take this one of these little guys, and I put it here. Is that true anymore? No, no. no. no let's just assume that a red and a gray are worth the same. I'm just trying to make one pop out to your eyes so you can see it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing it here. Can you tell that that's red? No. No, no. no. Okay. Yeah, I just barely, barely, huh? Barely. Should be a different color for next time. Well, it's not true anymore, right? Because what I've done is I've added one to this side, but not this side. I've made it not true. So how can I make this true? Putting the line underneath the left-hand side. Okay, well, barring the possibility of changing relationships that they had started with, that, that could be true. Uh, but if I put another one there, then it wouldn't be true, right? So how can I, uh, how can I fix it, aside from you know, changing the symbol? Ready? Add one of those red dots to the right, the right figure. And then put one over here as well. Now it's true? Yeah. So it'll always be true as long as you do what? The right side is one more than the other, the left side. The right side is one more? Okay. How can I always make sure that that's true? If I keep adding red balls to each, this side. Each time you add one to the left, you add two to the right. Two? One to the right. Well, one, yeah. Yeah, but when I put the one here, how many did I put over here? I'm going to put another one here. How many should I put over here? One. One more. So every time I put one here, I should do what? Yeah. One on the right. Put one on the right. Okay. So now the one on the right will always be what? More than. More than. Okay. Uh, so what I'm trying to show to you here is a, is a property of inequalities. It's the same as property of equations. If I tell you that something is less than something else in order to make sure that that stays true, Whatever I add to one side, no, add, it to the other. add it to the other side. Whatever I add to one side, add it to the other side. We'll make sure that that inequality remains true. And that's it. So as long as we do that, we can solve inequalities. Okay. So let's add this inequality: x minus four is less than twelve. I'm not sure what x is. I'm about to figure out what x is by making sure that whatever I Add to one side, I add to the other. So how would you think I would solve for x here, Brady? I have plus four on both sides. Add four. Add four. X is less than 16. Good? Yeah. Okay. 
So even though I learned inequalities, whenever I when, when I learned inequalities, I thought like, but this side's greater. I can just add whatever I want to that side, right? I can just add thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. This side would be just much much bigger than this side, right? But then the original relationship that we had will get messed up, right? It'll be too much bigger. It'll be a lot bigger than it was to start with. Okay. So even though that is still true, we would, uh, we would miss out on some of the things that x could be if we didn't do the same thing to both sides. Okay. It was easy to show you this and remind you of this when both sides had to be exactly the same. And I can say, well, we, want the, we don't want them to be unbalanced. With an inequality, are they balanced? No. Are both sides balanced? No, one side's like this. That's how it starts. But we want to make sure it stays that way, and we want to make sure that it's the unbalancedness of it is the exact same unbalancedness that we started with. Right? Kind of think of it as like, I want this, this angle that this bar is at to be the same the whole time. I don't want it to come up at all. I don't want it to go down at all. I want it to stay exactly the same. Does that make sense? Okay. It's not a perfect analogy, but it kind of works. So as long as I do the same thing to both sides, I'll be sure to preserve the relationship we started with. Okay? So add the same thing to both sides, subtract the same thing from both sides. Now you give it a try. Let's try x plus 4. No, that's 5. We'll change it up. It is greater than 3 equals to 7. Okay. So we solve that inequality. How do we solve this inequality? Five x is still greater than or equal to, or in order for this quantity x plus the number five to be greater than or equal to seven, then x needs to be greater than or equal to what number? Two. 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 Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I want this side to be greater than or equal to seven. Right, so I'm going to add something to five. That number needs to be well, two or more in order for the sum of those two to be bigger than seven. Two, three, four, but it has to at least be two. Let's practice a uh, real world problem here. I'm use an example here. Uh, so this is the example of a uh, of carry-on. You know what carry-on is? You take a trip on a plane or a train, you can carry on luggage that you can take with you onto the plane, but it has to be kind of small uh, so that uh, it doesn't take up too much space. So on a train, your bag can weigh no more than 50 pounds. Let's just start, we're gonna write an inequality. I don't think that's a surprise. 50 pounds, right? What would the inequality that I would use if it says that it can be, like the thing that you have can be no more than 50 pounds? So whatever we're talking about over here is going to be on the less than side, right? Yes. What's it equal to? What's that? Equal to. You think equal to? Yeah. The word it says no more than. If it's equal to, is it more than? Yeah. Okay. So equal to is fine. Right. So whatever we're talking about needs to be less than or equal to 50 pounds. Uh, your bag weighs 24.8 pounds right now. Right and swap, solve an inequality that represents the amount of weight that you can add to your bag. If you're at home, you know that it's going to have to weigh 50 pounds. You know it already weighs 24.8 pounds. And we want to write an inequality and solve it to tell us how much we can add. Right? There's a limit to how much we can add. Monica? 24.8 plus x. Sounds good to me, right? The amount that we have plus the amount to be added uh, needs to still stay below or be equal to. Solve this inequality do by doing what? Subtract what? 
Subtract 24.8. Subtract 24.8. Subtract 24.8. X needs to be less than or equal to 25.2. That's good. Yeah. 25.2 is what it has to come in. Right at 25.2 would be, be less than that. Okay. I feel like you get the addition subtraction rule. Alright, so we're good to go right there on half of what we're up to today. 3.2, taken care of. Alright. So now I'm going to, to without using the, the balls and the, the whole picture there, uh, let's just say that those properties of addition and subtraction, where you add and subtract the same thing to both sides, the same is going to be true for multiplication and division, right? Doesn't that make sense? Divide on both. If we divide one side by three, the other side needs to be divided by three. Okay. So if we have three x is less than uh, one, just use your intuition right now. How big would x have to be? Seven. Less than seven. Yeah, less than seven. The number that we're thinking about for x is seven. We need x to be less than seven. If x gets any bigger than 7, or if it is equal to 7, then this equality will be not true. All right. But how do we use algebra to figure that out? If you are beyond our intuition, how do we use algebra to figure that out? Sean? Divide by 3. Divide by 3 here. Get 3 there. x is less than 7. Let's, uh, I guess let's throw one other quick example up there. If x over 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Yeah, we're going to figure out what x is. Somebody hit the end. Let me go with the chart. Multiply by 5 on the side. Multiply by 5. By 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we get 1x. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15. So x is greater than or equal to 15. Got that multiply on both sides by the same thing, divide on both sides by the same thing. All right. Now, here is something I want to show you something. It's a little bit of a weird property that only applies to inequalities. Okay? So let's start with this example of an equation. Okay? 12 equals 12. Alright? Can't really mess that up, can we? 12 does equal 12. If I divide both sides by 2, what do I get? Six, six, six. Is that true? Yes. Okay, it's still true. If I divide both sides by negative two, what do I get? Negative six. Negative six. Okay. Makes sense. Right? So if I multiply both sides, divide both sides by a positive or a negative number, an equation just keeps being true. Right? Uh, but let's look at an inequality like negative two less than 6. Okay. Let's divide both sides by 2 and see if this is still true. Divide this by 2, divide this by 2, what's this going to say? Negative 1. Negative 1. Less than 3. Less than 3. Is that true? Yeah. It is true. It is still true. Now let's look. One last example. Let's divide by a negative 2. What's that going to say? Just one. Negative two divided by negative two is positive one. Less than negative two. Is that true? No. no. What happened there? Uh, John, you have a lot of When you well, when you divide or multiply by a positive by a negative, you get a negative, and you multiply it by positive by positive or a negative by a negative. So when we divide by a negative, whatever the sign is of that number, it's going to switch, right? Mm -hmm. divide, by a, uh, divide a negative by a negative, you get a positive, right? Like, so what a number that was, like here's 0, a number that was over here, now we divide it by a negative, now it's in the positives. That kind of makes sense? A number that was in the positives, you divide it by a negative number, it's over here in the negative. <coughs> 
So, and that's going to happen to both sides if you divide by a negative, right? So both sides kind of switch. Yeah, they kind of switch sides of zero. The one that was positive comes over here, the negative one goes over there, right? They kind of uh, kind of pass each other, right? Now the one that was bigger, now it's the smaller one. The smaller one's now the bigger one because it changed from negative to positive, positive to negative, right? So, actually. Jacob might have an idea of how we can fix this, similar to the suggestion we had at the beginning. Put a line underneath. No. Similar, not exactly the same, but like if I put a line underneath, will that be true? Is one no. what that equal to? But can I change the symbol some way that would make this true? Um, uh, negative three plus negative one. You just switch it around. Yeah. yeah. Just flip it the other way. Well, that makes sense. The numbers kind of flipped, right? Kind of changed positions. So really, the symbol kind of needs to follow suit. Okay. It needs to change as well. Kids? So if you divide by a negative, then it has to, the symbol has to change? Mm -hmm. Like we leave the numbers where they are, just kind of left, one on the left, right, one on the right, go like that. What's really happened though is the, the numbers have kind of switched roles. The larger one became smaller, the smaller one became larger because we divided by a negative. Right, so the symbol needs to flip around. Either that or the numbers need to change the left one on the right, the right one on the left. But either way, they've kind of traded roles. The bigger one's the smaller one, the smaller one's the bigger one now. Right? Let's try a few examples and we'll just kind of confirm that that is true. Let's try uh, 5 is less than 12. Uh, 6 is greater than 4, 21 is greater than negative 3, and 7 is less than 21. Are all these inequalities true? Yes. So far as I've written them? Let's do, to each of them, all we're going to do is just going to choose any negative number, divide both sides by that negative number, and see if we always need to flip the sign. We need to flip over the inequality. Does the larger side now become the smaller side, and the smaller side now become the larger side? I think you probably believe that's true. Let's try dividing this by uh, negative 1. Because there's not a lot of other negative numbers that would make this problem easy to look at. So 5 divided by negative 1 is what? Negative 5. Negative 5. 12 divided by negative 1? Negative 12. Now which side is larger? The the negative 5 is more to the right on the number line. By definition, it is larger, right? So we would need to flip the sign for this to stay true. Let's divide this by a negative 2. Divide by a negative 2. Okay. Well, 6 divided by negative 2 is? Negative 3. 3. 4 divided by negative 2. Negative 2. All right. Which side is larger now? The left, right. Right side, the negative two is larger than negative three, and we see that symbol did need to flip around. So we can work symbol for flip it around. Okay. Uh, for this one, let's divide both sides by a negative three. By a negative three. Okay. Now a negative divided by a negative. What do we one. get? One. one. Just a positive one. By the positive twenty-one divided by the negative three becomes. Seven, right? So this thing that was negative is now positive. The thing that was positive is now negative. It kind of jumps over zero. They switch places in a way, right? Which one is larger? One. One is larger than negative seven. Look at that. In order for this to stay true, we had to flip around the inequality sign. And this last one, let's divide by negative seven. Seven. Seven divided by negative seven is negative one. Twenty-one divided by negative seven is negative. Three, which is larger? Negative one. Negative one is larger, so in order for this to stay true, we have to flip that symbol around. Makes sense. If we divide by a negative, or if we multiply by a negative, right? Or if we multiply by a negative, we get the positives becoming negative, negatives becoming positive, larger numbers becoming smaller, smaller numbers becoming larger because they trade the other side of zero from where they were. So that relationship flips, so we flip that symbol around, or 
If for some reason you prefer to trade the, you know, change the side that the numbers are on, it's fine. But now we know that if we were gonna solve this inequality, negative five x is greater than 25, Well, then this x actually, what kind of number would x have to be? Just using your intuition, what kind of number would x have to be in order to be, in order for this to be bigger than 25? Negative. Right, because a negative times a negative is a positive. And do we want this side to be a positive number? Yeah. Yeah, we want it to be really positive. We want it to be bigger than 25. Right? So when we divide by a negative 5, as we would if this were an equation, at negative 5x equals 25, we divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5 on both sides, I get x, and I get negative 5, right? and x needs to be less than negative 5. Right? Flip that symbol around. As Sean said, that number needs to be a negative. Uh, in order for that negative times negative to be positive, we want x to be below negative 5. If it were bigger than negative 5, then it would get up into the positives, right? and that would mess up this whole thing. You want x to be less than negative 5. So remember that if you divide or you multiply on both sides by a negative, what do you do? Flip the sign. Flip the inequality sign around. Because the relationship of, of the two sides has now changed. The larger is now the smaller. The smaller is now the larger. Okay. And should do it. So we've got, what, nine minutes? 